So uh, this is the story of Kyonu and Jinya, uh, and it's called uh, Seven Seven. Um, and in Korean, it's called Chilsok. Uh, in Chinese, it's called the Chishi Festival. Um, so uh, the heavenly king had a daughter named Jinya, uh, and her name is actually uh, a beautiful weaving maid. Um, and then uh, she fell in love with a handsome boy. His name is Kyonwoo. This really means cowboy. <laughs> and then the Milky Way is a beautiful uh, starry path in the sky. Um, so they fell in love with, uh, they didn't do their work. So uh, Heavenly King grew angry and then ordered the couple to be separated. Uh, and then only one day a year. So that is the seventh day of the seventh month of each year. Um, and then um, in order to help them, uh, crows and babies uh, make bridges across the Milky Way. Um, and then at the end of the meeting, they start to uh, shed uh, tears, right? So uh, if the rains on that day, it's because of the couple's tears. Uh, and then uh, there is a legend that uh, make peas have no pe no uh, feathers on their heads because of the couples stepping on their heads. So um, uh, after the Dangun legend, uh, the story of Gyonu and Jinya is another uh, ancient legend that connects heaven and the earth. So Jinya represents the celestial realm, and the Gyonu represents uh, the earth, uh, and then they are. Uh, you know, unification, unity is only once a year. And then now let's move to another important tomb called Wu Yong Chong. Um, so uh, this tomb, uh, all the war paintings are now well preserved. Um, so what do we have is some ceiling decoration like this. Uh, and then we have a fragmented wall paintings like this. So we don't have a uh, owner's portraiture or any other uh, painting. Um, so Dokkungni and then uh, Muyongchong are also uh, belonging to the same group. Then you have a little bit of a celestial <coughs> depiction. And then you have that scenes of daily life, or it's called Zhang painting. Uh, you don't have uh, the uh, portraiture uh, of the, uh, oh, no, no, Dokkungni, you had a uh, portraiture, but Mu Yongchong, we don't see the owner's portraiture. So here you have some uh, scenes of daily life, such as uh, two maids or two women are carrying food trays. Do you see like a little bowls? So carrying food trays, and maybe one, two, three ladies are coming out of the door and then going somewhere. And then this one looks a bit like their barn uh, or stable. And then the owner or a nobleman is leaving a house uh, on his horseback. But in this tomb, the most important elements are these group of men and women. Why do you think I say men and women? Do you dress. see a oh, dress? Of, yeah. Tell us more. Because the woman wears a skirt, the man man wears like pants, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> jacket and uh, pants. And also based on their uh, head ears, you can see that he may be a leader of the group, right? Like he has that feathery hat, and then there are you know like a, a group of people following him. Um, so yeah, the reason I say men and women uh, is because these are considered women's dress and then the rest of them are considered men's dress. And also you can see the shoes are also a little bit different for men and women. Well, women has more like a, a boots type of shoes. Uh, and so, you know, whenever we consider reconstruction of a Goguryeo dress, <laughs> people usually come to this Mu Yong Chong uh, tomb of dancers and then um, try to uh, represent this. If you search for Mu Yong Chong uh, figures, like the dancers of Mu Yong Chong on the internet, you can see uh, various rep, rep, how do you call it, uh, uh, re reproduction of these dresses. There are a lot of opinions, like uh, what about these polka dots? You know, how do you going to create these polka dots? Can you tell us some of your hypothesis? How can you create these polka dots on, on your fabric? 
Any ideas? Yes. Maybe it's tied. A tied, uh, just like a tie dye of, uh, um, like a Japanese or you know other ties. I mean, Korean uh, people also have the tie dye. So you tie all these pieces and dye them, and then open it. And um, there are areas you tied and not. Mm, that that could be. Uh, who else? I know some cultures would use wax on the fabric to like make sure the dye didn't get on certain areas and that's how they would create patterns and then they'd boil off the wax when they were done dyeing it. Oh yeah, yeah, the wax resistant dyeing, right? Yes, that's a good point. Yes, so dyeing is one method. And and what else? Maybe it's just knitting. Oh, the, the male voice first. Uh, knitting. Knitting. Oh, so you are going to knit the whole garment with a needle? and thread well I, I don't know so much about uh knitting itself you know for knitting you need a lot of um you know yarns right like a little rather thick yarns uh okay interesting hypothesis uh who else it could have been woven woven yeah woven would be the most difficult uh in terms of uh level right <laughs> you you are going to weave together right but as you weave like a you know thread by thread some point you are going to make these dots right and then and then you you are you know going to be weave continuously all the way up your weaving could be possible uh, what else maybe like burn marks or scorch marks Scorch, you, you burn it? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> so these are actually holes, not the patterns. <laughs> that would be really interesting, right? Uh, it's so, so creative. But what, what, you know, you are not mentioning one particular technique in Asian uh, textiles. Block Neither. printing? Block printing? Block printing. Yes, so that's uh, you know uh, common in like later in Japan or uh, in India. Like you have wood block, right? And then you actually have these blocks, uh, you know, ready made on the wooden block, and then you continuously stamp on it. Yeah, um, that's uh, you know uh, decorative pattern. But what else? That very elaborate needlework. Embroidery. Embroidery, yes. Usually when I teach this, a lot of students first start with the embroidery and then we go to something else. So, you know, scholars argue that it's either embroidery or it's weaving. Uh, embroidery is very labor intensive. If you have to add, let's say, you know, 72 dots or something, uh, but possible, right? If you can have uh, skillful embroiderers, you can do rather but you know somehow it's like a really uniform do you see this like lines like this you know so it's more like a mechanical way of doing it and maybe it could be weaving like a weaving together with the patterns um so uh, there is no conclusion uh but you know if you are working for theatrical costume in order to reproduce these uh, dancers costume this is something that you have to think hard you know like considering historical contexts um, so uh, most feasible uh, and uh, like a, a historical method would be either embroidery or woven together but and but but um, there is also uh, foiling do you know the gold foiling technique? Uh, if you have a stamp of this pattern, um, you can put the foiling, uh, like the glues are placed on these areas, and then um, you can add the foiling. But the colors are black, um, which means it's not the gold foil or silver foil of shiny surface, something uh, visibly uh, conspicuous. Um, so maybe embroidery or uh, weaving. Um, Anyhow, so this is the most popular um, wall painting from uh, Korean art. You can see um, cosmetic cases <laughs> or uh, wallet cases or handkerchiefs with these patterns. Um, and then uh, the dresses, again, it's somewhat similar to the martial arts uniform, right? There are uh, dark color uh, ribbons for necks and the jackets and then um, um, 
you 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 have a, um, the uh, belt as well, uh, and then pants are really loose.